Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about what is activity therapy. So activity therapy is a therapeutic approach that allows you to engage in action. In that movement also it is included and activities is like, you know, it, it helps you to face problems and concerns and improve your quality of life. So this is activity therapy introduction. So activity therapy is nothing but a therapeutic approach that allows you to engage in actions and movements and activities to face problems and concerns and it improves your quality of life. So this is activity therapy. Let's see one by one. So activity Therapy is the nursing intervention classification. A nursing intervention defined as the prescription of an assistance with specific physical, cognitive, social, and spiritual activities to increase the range, frequency, or duration of an individual's or group's activity. Activity therapies include occupational therapy, recreational therapy, educational therapy, play therapy, music therapy, dance therapy, and art therapy. So we are going to see one by one all the therapies. So what are the aims of activity therapy? To assist the client in making a transition from sick role to becoming a contributing member of society. To assist in diagnostic and personality evaluation and to enhance psychotherapy and other psychotherapeutic measures. So this was the aim. Next we will be starting with occupational therapy. Occupational therapy is the application of goal-oriented, purposeful activity in the assessment and treatment of individuals with psychological, physical, and developmental disabilities. Those who are suffering from psychological, any physical, or developmental disabilities, for them, we advise occupational therapy. So what is the goal of occupational therapy? The main goal is to enable the patients to achieve a healthy balance of occupation through the development of skills that will allow him to function at a level satisfactory to himself and other. Second, occupational therapy is provided to children, adolescents, adults and elderly patients. It means for all age groups, you can provide occupational therapy if a person is suffering from psychological, physical, or developmental disability. This program are offered in psychiatric hospitals, nursing homes, rehabilitation centers, special schools, community groups, homes, community mental health centers, daycare centers, halfway homes, and in the addiction centers. Next, what are the what are the advantages of occupational therapy. So the first one is helps to develop social skill and provide an outlet for self-expression. It means when you engage with someone to doing some activities, it improves your social skills and self-expression. Strengthen ego defenses. Develop a more realistic view of the self in relation to others. Types of activities. So first is Diversion activities and therapeutic activities. There are two types of activities in occupational therapy. So diversion therapies, the activities are used to divert one's thoughts from life stress or to life or to fill time. Example, organized games. Diversional therapy we use to divert the mind. If person is stressed, person is not able to concentrate. So we divert their mind by using occupational therapy and therapeutic activities. These activities are used to attain a specific care plan or goal, for example, basket making or carpentry, etc. Next, 
we are going to see uh, for what kind of disorder, what kind of occupational therapy we are using. So suggested occupational activity for psychiatric disorder. So first one is anxiety disorder. Simple concrete task with no more than three or four steps that can be learned quickly. It means whatever we will be able to learn quickly in three to four steps. Those kind of activities we can be the person who is suffering from anxiety disorder like for example kitchen tasks, washing, sweeping, mopping, moving lawn and bedding gardens. Depressive disorder, so simple concrete tasks which are achievable. Again, it is important for the client to experience success. Provide positive reinforcement after each achievement, for example, crafts, moving lawn and bedding gardens. Third one is manic disorder, non-competitive activities that allow the use of energy and expression of feelings. Activities should be limited and changed frequently. Clients need to work in an area away from distractions. For example, wrecking grass and sweeping. Why we use non-competitive activity for manic disorder is because uh, they are hyperactive and they will take as a challenge. So that's why we should be a non-competitive activity to them. And we should change the activity frequently because they will not be able to stick at one activity. Next one is schizophrenia, paranoid. Non-competitive, solitary, meaningful tasks that require some degree of concentration so that less time is available to focus on delusions, for example, puzzles and scraps. Mm -hmm. We have seen schizophrenia paranoid. Now we are going to see schizophrenia catatonic. Simple concrete task in which client is actively involved. Client needs continuous supervision and at first work best on a one-to-one -one basis. For example, metal work or modeling clay, etc. Then antisocial personality, activities that enhance self-esteem and are expressive and creative, but not too complicated. Client needs supervision to make sure each task is completed. Dementia. So in dementia, what we can give is group activity to increase feeling of belongings and self worth Provide those activities which promote familiar individual hobbies. Activities need to be structured, requiring little time for completion and not much concentration. Explain and demonstrate each task, then have client repeat the demonstration. So in dementia, we are not supposed to be a difficult activity and we need to repeat the task or we, we need to show the steps to them again and again so that they can complete that task. Substance abuse, group activities in which client use his talent for example, involving client in planning social activities, encouraging interactions with others, etc. In childhood and adolescent disorders, children like playing, storytelling, or painting, poetry, music, etc. Adolescents, creative activities such as leather work, drawing, painting, and in mental retardation, repetitive work assignments are ideal. Provide positive reinforcement after each achievement, for example, cover making, candle making, packing, woods. It means easy activities you can give to them. Next, we are going to see the recreational therapy. So recreation is a form of activity therapy used in most psychiatric settings. It is a planned therapeutic activity that enables, provides, enables people with limit, limitation to engage in recreational experience. So let's see the aims to encourage social interaction, to decrease withdrawal tendencies, to provide outlet for feelings, to promote 
socially acceptable behavior to develop skills, talents, and abilities to increase physical confidence and a feeling of self-worth. What are the types of recreational activities are there? So motor, sensory, and intellectual. There are three forms. In motor forms, uh, this can be further divided into fundamental and accessory. Among the fundamental form are such games as hockey and football. Sensory, this can be either visual, example, looking at a motion picture or play, etc. And auditory, such as listening to a concert. And intellectual form, this includes reading, debating, and so on. Now, what are the activities are suggested? Uh, recreational activities we will be suggesting to different different disorders patients. So, anxiety disorder, aerobic activities like walking and jogging, depressive disorder, non-competitive sports which provide outlet or anger like jogging, walking and running, etc. Manic disorder, one-to-one -one basis individual games like badminton and ball, schizophrenia, paranoid. Concrete activities like chess and puzzles, schizophrenia catatonic, social activities to give client contact with reality like dancing, athletics, dementia, concrete repeat, repetition craft and project that breed familiarization and comfort. Next one is childhood and adolescence disorder. It is better to work with the child on a one-to-one -one basis and give him a feeling of importance. Some activities include playing, storytelling, and painting. Adolescents fare bigger, better in group. Provide gross motor activities like sports and games to use up excessive energy and mental retardation activities should be according to the client's level of functioning such as walking, dancing, swimming, ball playing, etc. Next one is educational therapy. So educational therapy is used when the client has a problem which results from a great deal of misconception. The educational therapist provides reading and learning experience that can do a great deal to eliminate his misconceptions and anxiety. Next one is bibliotherapy. So it is described as the prescription of reading material that will help to develop emotional maturity and sustain mental health. Some emotionally disturbed individuals are able to tolerate therapeutically to the experiences of others when they read about them rather than experiencing them directly. It always provides a medium for discussion with others. Next one is play therapy. So play therapy is a natural mode of growth and development in children. Through a play, a child learns to express his emotions and it serves as a tool in the development of the child. What are the functions? So curative functions is it releases tension and pent up emotions. It allows compensation for loss and failures. It improves emotional growth through the relationship with other children. It improves an opportunity to the child to act out his fantasies and conflicts, to get rid of aggression and to learn positive qualities from other children. So what are the diagnostic functions? How we can diagnose that a person or a child needs uh, play therapy. So play therapy gives 
the therapist a chance to explore family relationships of the child and discover what difficulties are contributing to the child's problem. Play therapy allows to study hidden aspects of the child's personality. It is possible to obtain a good idea of the intelligence level of the child and through play, intersibling relationship can be adequately studied. So this was, this was the uh, diagnostic functions. Next we are going to see types of play therapy. First is individual versus group play therapy. So in this what happened? Individual therapy, the child is allowed to play by himself and the therapist attention is focused on his one child only at a time. And in group play therapy, other children are also involved and therapist will be observing them. Next one is free play and controlled play. So in free play, the child is given freedom in deciding with what toy he wants to play. And in controlled play, the child is introduced in a scene where the situation or setting is already established. It means in established uh, situation, in controlled situation, you need to play. You cannot choose that I want to play this game or I wanted to do this. It's already planned. So structured versus unstructured play. Structured play therapy involves organizing the situation in such a way so as to be obtain more information and in unstructured play no situation is set and no plans are followed. Next one is directive versus non-directive play therapy. In directive play therapy the therapist totally sets the directions where in non-directive play therapy the child receives no direction. So, in short, play therapy is generally conducted in a playroom where a child can play in safe environment and the playroom should be suitably stocked with adequate play material and depending upon the problems of the children. So, this was about play therapy. Next one is music therapy. Music therapy is the functional application of music towards the attainment of specific therapeutic goals. And what are the advantages? It facilitates emotional expressions, improve cognitive skills like learning, listening, and attention span, and social interaction is stimulated. Next one is dance therapy. It is a psychotherapeutic use of movement which further the emotional and physical integration of the individual advantages helps to develop body awareness, facilitates expression of feelings, improve interaction and communication, foster integration of physical, emotional and social experiences that result in a sense of increased self-confidence and contentment. And last one is exercise through body movement maintains a good circulation of muscle tone. Next one is art therapy. So the goal of art therapy is to help the patient express his thought, emotions and feelings through his drawing. What are the importance of our art therapies? It is used as a diagnostic and therapeutic tool. It provides socially acceptable outlets for fantasy and wish fulfillment. It helps the patient to gain relief from anxiety by graphically representing complex and aggressive and traumatic material without guilt. Now, uh, let me discuss uh, how this activities therapy uh, for nursing practice is useful, you know. So, the nurse has an important role in enhancing the therapeutic effects of activity therapy like close coordination between the nursing staff and the activity therapy department is essential. By engaging in the activity, the nurse not only has an opportunity to support the therapeutic effort of 
the recreational therapist, but also has an invaluable opportunity to observe the client in different settings. Through her observation, the client's behavior during these activities, the nurse will gain valuable information that she can subsequently utilize to therapeutic advantage in the working phase of the nurse-client relationship. So this was about art therapies. Thank you.